So Steph, we've had a lot of comments from channel supporters about training later in the afternoon. So we've got a lot of members at the RCA as well, they're tradies, they've got to get up early, they can't train in the morning, they get back about four or five o'clock and they train before dinner. So how would they go about you know, implementing carbohydrate and properly not front-loading their day? Are they yep. back-loading their day? Like what's, what's the deal with these guys? And I've spoken <laughs> a lot about front-loading to support performance and then you know if you've got a weight loss goal for example but for these particular um, members you know we might actually be back-loading for example but we're going to do that in a very strategic way so that we're still supporting energy at the beginning of the day particularly if they've got a really physical job so if they're a tradie for example okay so as a bit of an example I would still um, always try and split that protein over the day if we can. Um, number one is just making sure we've got enough total protein, but really important if we've got a back half of the day training session. So say 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon, plenty of protein, breakfast, plenty of protein, lunch. What's, what's plenty of protein? Somewhere, it depends on the person, but if we aim for a, for a set um, number of grams, we're looking at anywhere from 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram body weight Okay. per, per day. Per so day. keep that in mind. Then, we split want to, strategic. And then split that. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, but ideally we want to have a, a you know, 30 to 40 gram hit at um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, for example. Okay. And again, work that out to be um, compared to your body weight. And does the two cans of mother and meat pie at the breakfast at the servo no. <laughs> yeah. work into that? And so this is where <laughs> often you'll find, you know, a bacon and egg roll may actually be a better choice for a trade. Okay. Uh, because we're still going to get a you know a decent amount of protein from that as well as carbohydrates. Okay. Um, if we can add some fruit onto the side of that, that would be great. Just to sort of tick off that that fibre portion that we're probably missing from your typical sort of white roll bacon and egg. Yeah. But if that's um, all that's available, it's going to be a much better choice than you know your, your cans of V and a, and a meat pie. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right, so hit the protein targets. Hit the protein targets. And then we still want to have carbohydrates at the beginning of the day. It doesn't mean that we completely skip them at the start of the day, but enough to give us energy throughout the day. It may just be lower than someone or is likely going to be lower than someone who's training morning. Okay. So, for example, if we were hitting any, you know, five to eight grams of carbs per kilogram body weight, and again, it's not. don't get too caught up in the numbers, but if we think about the day, Breakfast will still have some carbohydrate component, but we're probably going to add more in at lunchtime because it's going to start setting us up for fueling and, and performing at that 4 or 5 p.m. time when we get home from work and, and get on the bike. Okay. Now, if we sort of count backwards, you want to start and have that really solid lunch meal roughly about four hours beforehand, and then and that's going to be the highest carbohydrate meal of the day. Then about two hours out, I would have um, another small snack. So that might be anywhere from 30 to 60 grams worth of carbohydrates. That could be some yogurt and muesli, for example. So still a little bit of a protein portion there, mm -hmm. um, but still adding to the fuel. And then we have our kind of 30 minute out sort of pre-training snack. And this is just predominantly carbohydrates. It's giving us really quick um, fuel for our muscles so that when we get on the bike, that carbohydrate is readily available and you can hit high intensities at that 4 or 5 p.m. mark. Okay, let's just say it's an intense session for, for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at um, for, for that 90 minutes? Yeah, so I mean, again, going back to the 30 minute um, pre-training snack, yep. I would be hitting about 60 grams worth of carbohydrates there. If okay. you've had a really solid lunch um, and then that two hours out kind of snack, you might be able to get away with 30 grams, but if, if possible, try and get to 60 grams worth of carbohydrates 30 minutes out. 90 minute high intensity, I would still be getting anywhere from 60 to 100 grams of carbohydrates over that 90 minutes as well. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. And it's just gonna, you know, you gotta keep in mind you've used a lot of energy throughout the day. That's used a lot of the carbohydrate stores, particularly if you're a tradie. Your brain's using energy, our, your whole body is using carbohydrates as well. Um, and then we need to refuel a little bit of that. And it doesn't mean that we cut carbs completely, and it doesn't mean that we have a huge carbohydrate meal post but it's moderate. So it would sort of be breakfast is moderate, lunch is your biggest carbohydrate meal, dinner is moderate, and then head to bed. And if we cut them too much at dinner, you're likely gonna sleep quite poorly um, because your body is just not able to recover as efficiently without those carbohydrates. Yeah, okay, interesting. Um, can I throw a curly one at you? Yeah. <laughs> so what if, I'm, what if I'm not a tradie and what if I'm just somebody that's a bit uh, nocturnally, <laughs> yes. and I decide to do a high intensity session after dinner. Uh, should those people be consuming like high volumes of carbs during, let's say it's an intense session at like nine o'clock and mm. I'm going to bed at 11. 
um, which I know some people do, some RCA members do. Like, should they be trying to not consume carbs, given the fact that dinner's already been and they don't want to have too many carbs before bed? Or yeah, it's just... it depends, and we're never going to get it perfect. But what I would suggest in that instance is dinner should have a significant amount of carbohydrates in it. Obviously, we want to have a bit of protein, but for those, you know, in night sessions, it's more likely going to be um, easier to digest a, a white meat as opposed to a red meat still have carbohydrates and then if you can still give it an hour i would still have a, a higher um, sugar or, or easier to digest carbohydrate source of fuel just before you get on the bike then we might use a lower um, fueling strategy for those because we've got plenty of energy from the whole day's worth of food as well as dinner our pre-training snack it was only 90 minutes i would be going on the very lighter end of that okay. um, even at an intense session even an intense session okay. Um, because it's not until really the 60 minute mark that we're probably going to have to top up those fuel sources. Okay. So I might just only do 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates in total, um, hit a protein post and then off to bed. And so okay. it might just be as simple as, you know, a tub of yogurt, which will have a small amount of carbohydrates, but predominantly a, a protein hit post ride off to bed, um, or, you know, a protein shake with a piece of fruit and then off to bed. Okay. So is that going to affect their sleep? It may well affect like their sleep, but yeah. if we completely cut back carbohydrates is going to affect sleep even more. So we're okay. never going to get it perfect. And I would much prefer that they fuel their performance, fuel the recovery or support the recovery, I should say, um, and then sleep rather than go light, light, light um, and under fuel because the body is not going to be able to recover and, and sleep very well anyway. And keep in mind that those higher sugar foods that we typically have, like your sports drinks, your gels, things like that in training, you've used that up. So it's it's not sitting there in your muscles unless you happen to have, you know, had huge amounts um, in excess. Um, you've used that up, so it's not gonna necessarily affect your sleep as much as if you would just have a gel and go straight to sleep. Okay, so there's no silver bullet for those trainers. It's more so um, some simple strategies to make it a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and just manage it and see what works for you. Everyone's a little bit different. Trial a couple of different things. Um, but I would always have that little bit of protein hit post so that we can, um, if there's any you know, leftover fuel in the body, we can reduce how um, quickly that's absorbed into the bloodstream and it's gonna help support the brain sort of re um, getting ready to sleep as well. Okay, cool, thanks.